Thank you for welcoming us into your home. We are so thankful for this weekend, this September 12th, this 16th Sunday after Pentecost. Around the world, it's Rally Weekend. People are coming home and coming back to church for the program year, and we are so thankful to share that time with you, especially in worship today, as we gather in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship. And as we do, we gather with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit may it be with you, and also with you. confess our sins to the we one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, through suffering and rejection, you bring forth our salvation. And by the glory of the cross, you transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from the lure of evil, take up our cross, and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hi everyone, I am so glad that we are all together. Today is a very special day because um, we are all kind of heading back to school. Um, our routine is a little different. We're probably going to bed earlier um, because school has started, right? And so today we are going to do something really fun. We are going to bless our backpacks as we think about um, heading back Hi guys. to school. Hey Nicole, Hi. I brought my backpack. I, that is quite the backpack. Look yep. at that. Yep. It's the oh biggest, my gosh. it's the biggest and the best backpack because I am the best student because that is what school is about being the best. But is it really about being the best? And having the biggest and having the best things. It is a very nice backpack. I do love it. Turn around so everybody can Thank see it. Thank you. It is very nice. It is very big. Yes. But I don't think school is about being the best and having the biggest and the best backpack. Well, that's why you're blessing it, because it's the best backpack. Because I'm the best student. Straight A's, varsity teams, number one always. Oh my goodness. I think um, that it is more about being kind to others, taking care of those around us, being kind to ourselves, and taking care of ourselves this year, and not necessarily about being um, the best and having the best of everything and being a straight A student and making the varsity team. I think there's so much more to it than that. So you're saying it's not about being the best or having the best. No. It's about taking care of ourselves. Yes, and taking care of those around us. I all guess of, I can work on that too. All of God's children. We're all God's children, right? And right. And so we take care of each other. And that is how we become the best, is by taking care of each other. I guess that makes a little more sense because this backpack's really heavy and big. And I keep hitting people in the hallways and they don't like that. So no. maybe I don't need the biggest and bestest backpack. No. I just need to be the bestest person I can be. Absolutely. There's an idea. Well, thank you for correct. Well, yes. thank you. So, so we can remember that and remember how to be that way. Um, today, we all get these cute little um, backpack lanyards. How cute are they? Yay. And um, sometimes it's really hard when we are trying to be the best and we are trying to um, be kind to those around us. Um, and we sometimes feel alone and we kind of feel sad sometimes. And with school starting, there are so many emotions. We're excited one minute. We're kind of nervous the next. Um, we're scared to leave home, but we want to be with all of our friends. Um, and so this little um, backpack clip is kind of a reminder that we are never alone, that God travels with us wherever we go. And this is a reminder that yes, we can be the best that we can be. Yeah. So what I want you to do right now, wherever you are at, whether you are sitting here with us or you're at home, wherever you're at, I want you to go find your backpack. If you didn't bring it with, think about it in your mind. Think about what it looks like and how big it is. If you are heading back to work, if you are a teacher or if you're a volunteer or you help in the schools, um, I want you to think about your work bag that you take um, every single day with all of your stuff. And we are going to bless them. Yes. Yes. So, clasp your hands. Think about your backpack. Put your hands on your backpack. And I am going to bless them for you. Children, families, and all who love them, go out into the beautiful world that God has made. Go and play, go and learn, go and love others. May you be filled with loving kindness for yourself and everyone around you. May the prayers of your faith community keep you safe, healthy, and full of joy. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nicole. Yes. So after church, you can go on the Narthex and grab one of these for your backpack mm -hmm. and or work bag or whatever you want to clip it onto mm -hmm. and take it home with you. And if you aren't with us in worship, you can stop by this week and pick one up in the Narthex anytime. Yes. Yay. Enjoy. Good seeing you. Have Bye. a great year. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 50, beginning with verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, 
that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Psalm 116. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I called. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought low and God saved me. Turn again to your rest, O oh my soul, for the Lord has dealt well with you. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. The second reading is from James chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with the bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, that they are guided by a very small rudder whenever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is in itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both flesh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark, the eighth chapter. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist and others Elijah and still others, one of the prophets. 
He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed. And after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will find it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O Lord God, we give you thanks for your Holy Spirit, that you work in and through us and you loosen our lips to sing your praise. Help us to reflect your glory this week and always. Amen. Well, upon reading the text for this week, a preacher ought to be a little bit uh, careful with what they say. The passage from Isaiah, the psalm, the passage from James, they speak of few being teachers watching out what your little lips say because the lips and the tongue have so much power in this world. When I was in Sunday school, they put it this way. Oh, be careful, little tongue, what you say. Oh, be careful, little tongue, what you say. For the Father up above, he is listening in love. Oh, be careful, little tongue, what you say. I probably learned that when I was about four years old, and I wasn't always careful with my tongue. In fact, I learned how to differentiate the taste between life boy and lava soap. I would advise you to eat or taste neither of them. Uh, and most people would learn that once is enough, and some people take two or three times. I'm often among the slow to learn. And so I learned some from my parents what my tongue was to be used for and what it was not to be used for. Of course, if you watch uh, the movie A Christmas Story, you watch Ralphie's little friend get double dog dared and triple dog dared to stick his tongue on the flagpole, which he does foolishly, for he had not yet learned thermodynamics and the rate of freezing in sub-zero weather. That information comes in really handy when one lives in North Dakota. I'm gonna to have to make sure I remember those lessons as I transition from Arizona. But be careful what you say. The tongue can be used to build up and the tongue can be used to tear down. I have found that the way in which a person responds in a given situation can often radically affect the outcome of that situation. That people can often throw additional gasoline on the fire and make things worse, or one can use one's tongue to bring down the temperature and to calm the situation. And so we are encouraged to use our tongue rightly. When we learn the small catechism of Martin Luther and we get 
to the part of the commandments where it asks what it means to take the name of the Lord your God in vain. It shares the things that we ought not use our tongue for. We ought not use it to curse, swear, lie, or deceive. But there is a right use of the tongue, and that is to call upon God in prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. When we do that, it's like the psalmist says, God hears our prayers, and God delights in our prayers. And indeed, it is important to pray, whether it be out loud or whether it be silently, we're invited to pray at all times. But to use our tongue to call upon the Lord, especially as we approach the throne of grace on behalf of others, we use our tongue rightly. But maybe it's more than just the tongue. Maybe it's a little broader than that. When we journey with Jesus and the disciples through Mark's gospel up to Caesarea Philippi, for whatever reason, Jesus is curious. Who do people say that I am? I think he genuinely wants to know. You see, he's about to go to Jerusalem. He's about to experience the suffering, pain, death, and rejection that he's going to foretell. What do they see in me? Who am I? Who do they think I am? Well, that's easy. John the Baptist, or perhaps you're Elijah, the one to prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. Or maybe you're one of the other prophets. That's kind of an easy question. It's generic. It's asking, who do other people say that Jesus is? Well, that's a pretty safe question. The trickier question comes when Jesus says this, who do you say that I am? Well, we can answer that question many ways. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. We could answer that. We could say things about Jesus. We could teach about Jesus. We could articulate things that describe Jesus. But I don't know if that's what he's after. Peter, who is so good at getting things right, and also really good at getting them wrong, articulates so clearly, you are the Messiah. You are the anointed one of God. You are the one coming into the world. You nailed it, Peter. And then Jesus starts talking about getting nailed to the cross. The journey to Jerusalem, the path to death, and indeed resurrection. But you see, Jesus' words do not match Peter's paradigm of who the anointed one is. I mean, come on, somebody's got to kick the Romans out. Someone's got to bring this place back to its former glory. If not the Messiah, then who? But Jesus has to rebuke Peter, and the rebuke is as harsh as the praise. Get behind me, Satan. You see, in Scripture, Satan is the tempter, the one that seeks to knock us off course, the one that tries to keep us from doing the will of God. And Jesus says, Peter, you got your mind on earthly things, not on heavenly things. It's got to change. And of course, Jesus orders them to tell no one about him. Which seems really strange to me because later on, he's going to tell us to go into all creation and tell everyone. But at this time, he wants Peter to hold his tongue. He wants the disciples to hold their tongues. As I said earlier, the question is just a little broader than perhaps our tongue. When Jesus asks us, who do you say that I am? Well, we can answer that with our wallets too, can we not? Are we often challenged to put our money where our mouth is? To say that we reflect the life of Jesus? And you see, money is just money. It's, it's, it's paper, but it's, it's what it represents. 
You take your life, you trade it with an employer, and you give life to your employer, and your employer gives you money so you can live. What do we do with our lives? How do our lives answer the question? That indeed is the question. Who do you say that I am? Not just with your lips, not just with your tongue, but with your life. And Jesus explains it pretty clearly. Anyone who seeks to save their life is going to lose it. But those who let go of their life and lose their life for my sake, those are the ones who find it. So maybe in this week and in all weeks to come, we will be challenged with that question. But who do you say that I am? May God grant us the wisdom to maybe hold our tongue, to think about it a little bit, and then make answers that are pleasing in God's sight. So that as we live and as we move, we witness to Jesus, not just by the bumper sticker on our car, the cross around our neck, or the church we go to, but rather how we treat our very tangible neighbors. Because they're wondering when they look at us, who do you say Jesus is? And they wait for your answer every day. By the grace of God, may we bear witness to Jesus Christ in ways that are pleasing in God's sight. Amen. Please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, 
and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Revealing God, you have made yourself known through bread and wine, water and word. Continue to nurture your church that it is a place where your presence is experienced and shared. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, you brought life into being and called it good. Bring new creation to lands devastated by tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, fire, and other disasters. Restore the forests and curb overflowing waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting God, you deserve, deserve desire all people to live in peace and safety. Provide for all who are in danger. Strengthen first responders to help meet the complex needs of others. Provide care and compassion as they face trauma themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Transforming God, you answer and announce release to the captives and freedom to the oppressed. Break chains of discrimination and injustice. Amplify voices that go unheard and inspire us to advocate for those who are overlooked. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forming God, you gather this community together. Shape our communal life that in our prayer, praise, and thanksgiving, we would honor you and encourage one another. Keep our disagreements civil and increase our joy in working together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Redeeming God, you accompany your people through every stage of life. We give you thanks for the saints who now rest in your embrace, for the new saints who have come to us in baptism, to the saints in our care being nurtured in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. Share the peace of Christ with those with whom you are gathered. Well, it's time for our Mission Minute to come up. We want you to know that this is Rally Sunday and we're glad that you could be with us online. We want to and extend an invitation to you to join us in person next week, either on Saturday evening or on Sunday morning at any of the three worship times available. Also, uh, our educational programs are kicking in and we invite you to uh, participate in those as, as you see fit. If you have uh, little people in your house, uh, just call the, call the church office, we'll set them up for Sunday school, and uh, we're so glad that you're with us this morning. Thanks for sticking with us to this point of the broadcast.
us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from heaven. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offerings of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to gather uh, the elements of bread and wine that you have in your home as we begin our celebration of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed our duty and our joy that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending. us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my faith to the rising sun, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I invite you to take and eat the body of Christ given for you. After supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink from, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and fill you with his grace. We remember that and we remember God remembers us in his kingdom and taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life and the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Go forth with this blessing. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life into a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God.